Hi people, it's me, Anya, my pronouns all she and her, and welcome back to my channel for part 19 of my favorite sapphic books with the sapphic main characters. For those who don't know, sapphic is an umbrella term for woman loving woman, which includes non-binary people. So without any further ado, the first book on this list is called So Let Them Burn. This story is a YA Jamaican inspired fantasy that follows two sisters, and one of them is God's Blessed. And basically, she has to choose between saving her sister and protecting her homeland. This story is absolutely so excellent and it's so fantastic and I'm so excited to read the sequel, which I believe comes out next to you. There's no title, there's no cover, there's nothing. I'm just so excited to read it because this book was absolutely so fantastic and so good. First of all, the world building is excellent and it's so immersive and it's so well done. The plot's so engaging and so intriguing. The dual perspective works so well and I love the characters so much. I'm so excited to see what will happen next. I'm actually not quite sure if this series is a duology or a trilogy or even longer, but either way, I'm just so excited to dive back to this world with these characters. One of the main characters is bisexual, in case you were wondering, and her sapphic romance is so cute and it's so well paced. Everything about this book is absolutely so excellent. It deserves all of its hype and so much more. So anyway, with that said, I would definitely highly, highly recommend it. The next book on this list is called It Goes Like This. This story is a YA contemporary following two exes who band up again when their band prepares for one last show. And when I say exes, I mean exes as in formal girlfriends, formal friends, formal bandmates. This book is absolutely so excellent and it's so well done. First of all, the writing is so pretty and it's so good. The characters are so well developed and so distinct. The multiple perspectives work so well. I think that each character had a perfect amount of time in their head, like in their perspective, if that makes any sense, because their dynamic works so well and I love it so much. The romance exes to lovers was done so well and I ship them so much. Like typically I don't really enjoy like a second chance romance, but this book was so good. It's absolutely so excellent and awesome and I truly fell in love with the characters from the beginning to the end. The flashbacks made so much sense. This book is so good and it's so underrated and it deserves so much more hype. So anyway, if any of that made any sense, basically I would highly, highly recommend it. The next book on this list is called Aerial Clashes of Twain. This story is a YA contemporary following a sapphic main character who is navigating her mental health, particularly her new diagnosis of OCD. This story is absolutely so excellent and it's so well done. First of all, the mental health representation is so good and it's so well done. The free verse format is so pretty. I had really high expectations for this book prior to reading it because the author debuted with Deal Medusa last year. Actually, I'm not quite sure if that's actually her debut or not. But anyway, I read Deal Medusa by this author last year and it was absolutely so excellent that I just knew or I predicted that this story would also be four stars, and it was. The characters are so well developed and so distinct. I love it when characters feel like real people and less like vessels for the author's thoughts and dreams, if that makes any sense. This book is so good. I loved the friendships. I loved the writing. I loved the characters. I loved everything about it, like the main character's relationship with her sister, for example. Felt so authentic and so well done. This book is so good. And it's so underrated and it deserves so much more hype. So anyway, with all that said, I would definitely highly, highly recommend it. The next book on this list is called Winnie Nash is Not Your Sunshine. This story is a middle grade contemporary following a sapphic main character who is torn between celebrating pride and her family's secrets. This story is absolutely so excellent and it's so well done. I love the trope of a main character spending a summer or any period of time really but particularly I prefer summers because summer is typically in American society when you don't have school so it's like the main character has to find like a new hobby or whatever anyway I digress the point is I like the fish out of water trope I love it when a main character spends somewhere in a new place that's what I'm trying to say why did I explain that in the most convoluted way ever anyway I digress the point is this book was absolutely so excellent and it's so well done 
The characters were so well developed and so distinct. The queerness was excellent. This book was on my April TBR and I'm so glad that it lived up to those expectations, which reminds me that I need to plan out my June TBR because I haven't even touched that yet. Anyway, the plot is so intriguing and so engaging. The friendships are so lovely and so wonderful. Everything about this book felt so awesome and so necessary and so important and absolutely so good. This book is excellent and it's brilliant and I really, really enjoyed it. So anyway, with all that said, I would definitely highly, highly recommend it. The next book on this list is called Something Kindred. This story is a YA magical realism contemporary following a young black bisexual main character who is navigating new love, her family secrets, and the line between the living and the dead. This story is absolutely so excellent and it's so well done and it deserves all of its hype and so much more. Second of all, or sorry, first of all, the setting is so atmospheric and it's so good. Like I mentioned earlier, I love the fish out of water trope. I love the main character spending somewhere in a new place, particularly tied to family history. At some points during this novel, I compare this book to We Deserve Monuments, which is such a high compliment because I love that book so much. However, this book has more of like a supernatural, paranormal, fantastical, ghostly side to it. So that's a difference for me. Anyway, the sapphic romance was so cute and it was so well paced and so well done. The characters are so well developed and so distinct. The family dynamics made so much sense. The plot is so engaging and so intriguing. This book is so good. And it also reminds me that I should make another video focusing on my favorite black bisexual main characters. So please let me know if that's something that you're interested in. But anyway, the point is, this book is absolutely so excellent and it's so good. So with that said, I would definitely highly, highly recommend it. The next book on this list is called Every Time You Hear That Song. This story is a YA historical fiction slash contemporary following two dual timelines and two main characters. One of them is a bisexual main character in modern day who's on a spontaneous road trip left behind by her favorite celebrity. And the other timeline follows said celebrity. I don't know if that makes any sense at all, but this book is so good. I really, really enjoyed it so much. I love books with dual timelines, with flashbacks, with like knowing the present, but then explaining like in the past how we got there exactly. That makes no sense. You'd think that I would enjoy more books about time travel and time bending, but I really don't because in the sci-fi like field, it sometimes becomes too confusing. And like for me, I just want the time travel to be the world building and not necessarily the main plot. I digress. I just watched Tenet, if you're wondering where my brain's at right now. But anyway, the point is about this book in particular, I really, really enjoyed it so much. The plot is so engaging and so intriguing. The characters are so well developed and so distinct. The romances in both timelines are so cute and so well paced. Everything about this story made so much sense and I just really, really enjoyed it so much. Another thing about me is that I really appreciate like road trip stories. This book was so good. I really, really liked it so much. So anyway, with that said, I would definitely highly, highly recommend it. The next book on this list is called Finally Fits. This story is a YA contemporary following a young bisexual main character who's fake dating her childhood best friend, whom, by the way, she hasn't seen in years, to make her ex-girlfriend jealous. This story is absolutely so excellent and it's so well done. First of all, another thing about me that I absolutely love, minus friends to levels, which we all know I love so much, is fake dating. And fake dating in a queer lens is absolutely so awesome and so well done and so much better than a straight lens. But anyway, the romance is so cute and it's so well done. Like the characters make so much sense and I love them so much. Fitz's relationship with social media and her anxieties and her perfectionism and her relationship with everyone else is so well written and it's so good. This book deserves so much more hype because it's absolutely so excellent and it's so good on the surface it's like a fluffy cute happy book but then underneath the surface it's also a book about like mental health as well which i think is so important and so well done anyway i don't know if anything i'm saying makes any sense at all 
but basically this book is so good. I would definitely highly, highly recommend it. The last book on this list is called This Is Me Trying. This book is my most recent five star read. So for those who don't know, it's a YA contemporary following two former best friends and they reunite after the last time they each saw each other, like they had a third best friend, but their third best friend committed suicide. So basically the two of them are navigating grief, love, mental health, and what it means to build a future after unfathomable loss. I don't know if any of that makes any sense, which I know is something that I say a lot. I realize sometimes when I'm saying that, I'm actually genuinely thinking that I don't make any sense, but sometimes I think that I maybe I do make sense. It just depends on the scenario. Right now, I just think that maybe I'm repeating myself and I just sound generic. But anyway, the point is, this book is so good. First of all, the writing is excellent. It's so beautiful. It's so lyrical. The story itself is so emotional and it's so well done. The characters are so well developed and so distinct. I love them individually as well as together and their emotions make so much sense. The grief is done so well. The queerness is done so well and it felt so normalized and so well done. This book made me cry three times because I truly fell in love. I fell in love with the story, with the emotions, with the characters, with their dynamic. Like this book is excellent and it deserves all of its hype and so much more and I truly loved it so much. So anyway, with all that said, I would definitely highly, highly recommend it. So in conclusion, I hope that this video, as per usual, helps diversify your bookshelf. Homophobia is not tolerated on my channel, neither is transphobia or any form of hate or discrimination in general. In conclusion, if you enjoy this video, please don't hesitate to give it a big thumbs up. Comment down below the octopus emoji if you made it all the way to the end of the video. Thanks for watching, subscribe to my channel if you're new. I'll see you in my next video. Bye!